Okay, I'm going to go over Isaiah chapter 3. Now, before anyone wants to say this is Israel of old, that's fine. But we're talking about sin here and everything taking place, and it's definitely taking place in these last days in earnest. Sin, let's start off. This is Isaiah chapter 3 and uh, verse 1 here. For behold, the Elohim, the Elohim, a host, takes away from Jerusalem and from Judah. Now, first thing a lot of people say, well, that's only about the Jews. People, it doesn't matter if you're Jew or of Israel. It doesn't matter. Sin is sin. It doesn't matter if you're from India, from Mexico, or whatever. Sin is sin, and the same repercussions apply irregardless of who does it. That's the point I want to bring out. And this whole chapter illustrates everything we're seeing. Not that these things haven't been going on in uh, millennia of past. It's really concentrated right now. So this whole chapter is what's getting ready to happen. See, because he says, I change not. But this is for us. And this whole chapter is an eye-opener. So let's finish this verse. And this goes along with exactly what Ezekiel chapter 7 says, where he says, The buyer and the seller shall mourn. And though he is still alive, he shall not return to what he has sold. That's another way of saying that when everything hits the fan, that the stores are going to be ransacked and looted, windows and doors broken. They're not going to return to the stores. Walmart's going to be empty. Chaos is going to be everywhere. The supply chain is no more. And this whole chapter of Isaiah 3 will go right along with that. So that's why I'm bringing this up and preparing you for what's getting ready to happen. So when he says he's still alive, they still have the, the businesses, but they're not returning to what they have sold. The stores are no good anymore. The cities have, have been ransacked by warlord gangs or whatever, whoever. But notice what he says here that goes along. It's the same thing that Ezekiel's saying. The stock in the store. Notice that. Stock in the store. The stores won't be stocked. The whole supply of bread and the whole supply of water. Now what did he say? He takes away from Jerusalem and from Judah. You, you can say Israel too because that's getting ready to happen to the U.S. The store is going to be empty. The bread and the whole supply of water. Water. Not just the food and the supplies. But water as well. And forgive me, I tried to do one outside and wind just now started up. I'm just going to have to finish it. It's hard to get a day with no wind. Then he says, The mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet, and the diviner and the elder. He's singling out our problems. And our judges and senators and governors and whoever, whatever, they're all guilty. The captain of 50 and the honorable man, the counselor and the skillful artisan and the expert enchanter. You can throw in singing stars, Hollywood, or whoever, whatever. He's basically saying to everybody what's getting ready to happen to America the Babylon. Verse 4, I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. <laughs> Is that not what's going on? Has not the U.S. laws been formulated that you can't spank your child? They get out of control. They're basically calling the shots because the U.S. laws rob parents of their right to rule the children. You know where, you know where that's headed. Verse 5, the people will be oppressed, everyone by another and everyone by his neighbor. Now what... Now take a look at that. Everyone's oppressed. Let me let's read it again. Everyone by another and everyone by his neighbor. I'll give you one such example. Living in the city. There's house upon house down this street. Each street houses are just, if you're lucky, you got 10 feet between the houses. So you got to do what pleases the neighbor. <laughs> Is that not true? You piss the neighbors off or they piss you off and... And you get out of line, they're going to call 
uh, the, the cops on you. Oh, you can't put that fence up. That's, that's against penal code. That's not code. It goes on and it goes on. And it, every, these U.S. laws are being used so that everybody can bass each other over the head with it. We're being oppressed by the U.S. system based upon mistrust. There's a million different ways people are being oppressed. Child support is on top of the list. Women are incentivized to have children that way. Either the man's going to take care of them, or if they get divorced, it's child support. Then they get Medicaid, food stamps, and on it goes. And the men are punished and oppressed. The, the child will be insolent toward the elder and the base towards the honorable. Verse 6, when a man takes hold of his brother in the house of his father, saying, You have clothing, you be our ruler, and let these ruins be under your hand. Verse 7, and that day he will protest, saying, I cannot cure your ills, for in my house is neither food nor clothing. Do not make me a ruler of the people. Just listen to the words that Isaiah is illustrating. This is our day for sure. So don't tell me this is for Israel only of old. We're going through everything we're reading here. We're seeing it happen right in front of our face. I mean, I just can't believe that people always try to say it's Israel of old, Israel of old. Whatever applies to them back then applies to us today. The rules don't change over the passage of time. We need to understand that. Okay? Verse 8, For Jerusalem stumbled and Judah has fallen because their tongue and their doings. You could add the word Israel in here because it applies to everybody. Are against the Elohim to do what? What's going on? What's going on? What happened at the beginning of the Olympic Games? If you haven't seen it, you might die of a heart attack. To provoke the eyes of his glory. They just did it. They did a mock-up of the Last Supper with nothing but transgenders. And what was supposed to be representative of Jesus was this big fat woman, huge Baphomet tattoos on the arm. It was the most disgusting and outright Satan-worshipping thing I've ever seen in my life. I was reeling in shock and horror. And, and I looked, and one of those that was supposed to be one of the disciples in, in this mock-up here, his testicles in, in World Wide TV, testicles right out where everybody can see him, even children can see his testicles hanging out of his shorts or whatever. Now, is this not to provoke the eyes of his glory, it says here? Well, this verse, and verse 9 especially, especially applies to this mock-up of the Last Supper at the Olympic Games. So everyone's getting, a lot of Christians got happy. Well, God's hand put out the, the lights, put the power out in, in Paris. Well, maybe, I don't know, but it seems to me that if it was his judgment, it would be a hell of a lot more than taking the power out that they're going to fix in 24 hours anyway. But this whole chapter goes on for what's getting ready to happen. Because it doesn't stop there. Now, now he's going to get ready to answer. And when he does, we're going to know who it is. But let's take a look at verse 9, the big one. Notice this. The look on their countenance, what people looks like, how they act, the body language, all that. Witnesses against them. Oh, that's America. And they declare their sin as Sodom. They do not hide it. Woe to their soul, for they have brought evil upon themselves. They declare their sin as Sodom. The gay pride marches. The Olympic game, Last Supper, transgender, whatever you want to call that. The most disgusting and Satan-worshipping thing I've ever seen. In fact, every, even this guy who carried the church, what it, Snoop Dogg, is that what they call him? Wearing a Baphomet necklace? Come on, people. This is outright open Satan worship. And the, 
The biggest part of the blame lies at the feet of the pulpit because they threw the Torah law into the trash. Now they can all come out of the closet. They don't hide their gay pride. I go to Walmart almost every time there's uh, two girls or two women holding hands. I mean, for crying out loud, almost every female anymore is a lesbian. What is wrong with this picture here? This is, they, they forgot about Sodom and Gomorrah. He says they declare their sin as Sodom. They don't ha have any shame. They're proud of it. That's why they call it pride. Pride cometh before the fall. I went over that in a previous video. <clears throat> now he's going to start <clears throat> telling us what he's going to do about it. Verse 10. <clears throat> Excuse me. Say to the righteous that it should be well with them, for they should eat the fruit of their doings. He said, says to the righteous, though. Who's the righteous? Certainly not those at the Olympic Games with that, whatever you want to call that. I wanted to start throwing stuff. I couldn't even watch it all. I've never seen anything more horrific. Woe to the wicked, it shall be ill with him. For the reward of his hands shall be given him. And what's, and it's not just the transgenders and the gay pride and all that. It's worshiping the pagan holidays, believing in false doctrine, offering up a sick, corrupt lamb. Hold on, there's wind starting up. Try to get this over with. Verse 12, as for my people, sorry about that, I had to tie this thing up, the wind wants to kick up. Notice this, verse 12, Isaiah chapter 3, as for my people, children are their oppressors. Boy, did I go through that one. I won't even get into that story, but this is going on everywhere, the dishonoring of the parents. And women rule over them. This is not against women as gender but men do have the headship role like it or not now what do we see women judges women senators women now they're trying to put Kamala in I don't know how far that one's gonna go I mean that would be the ultimate insult I'm not, I don't mean anything against women in general I'm only going by what the scriptures are saying and letting that be my final verdict Oh, my people, those who lead you cause you to err. Oh, boy, that's the U.S. government. That's the churches. Yep. Yeah. And destroy the way of your past. The Elohim stands up to plead and stands to judge the people. Well, that is where we're heading right now. Now, I've been asking myself over and over, why is things, why are we moving at a snail's pace? As far as my opinion goes, things are so slow even though a lot's happening, this is going in slow motion. I figure we should have been a lot further down the road by now. But it is going to kick loose because he says he stands up to plead, stands to judge the people. Verse 14, the Elohim will enter into judgment. Notice he says enter. In other words, after all these centuries, he's let all this stuff go. Then finally, and Jeremiah somewhere says it, that he's held this silence, or is it Isaiah? He's held this silence, but then he stands up as a man of war. It's the same thing. It's worded differently, but it means the same thing. Out of nowhere, he's going to stand up, and all of a sudden, here it is. So that's why I keep saying something's holding all this back. And I don't know exactly why it's being held back so long, but there's... He's got to have a timetable or something going on here. But he says, you will stand up with the elders of his people and his princes. For you've eaten up the vineyard. The plunder of the poor is in your houses. All these people with all this money, they have all that because they scammed us. They overpriced. They took advantage. They plundered us. Our plunder, all of our monies went into taxation. High inflation, high prices, low wages, oppressing people by the wages, scheming, scamming, backbiting, 
You fill in the blanks. And now we're going to find out what's getting ready to happen. Verse 15, what do you mean by crushing my people and grinding the faces of the poor, says the Elohim of hosts. In other words, that's another way of saying, who do you think you are? That's another, that's what he says, what do you mean by crushing my people? It's another way of saying, planet Earth, just who the hell do you think you are? That's exactly what this is saying. Who do you think you are? Verse 16, moreover, the Elohim says, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with outstretched necks and wanton eyes. They're always out. Now, this is not against all the women, but the women who think of men as a convenience, become my boyfriend so you can pay the bills, be my sugar daddy, whatever you want to call it. This is going on all everywhere. And they're walking and mincing as they go, make a jingling with their feet. How they walk and they shake their buttocks and, and they're wearing clothes with half their boobs showing to attract the men. I'm not coming against all the women. I'm talking about the majority here. It's all provoking the men to mislead them and take what they can. The gold diggers, if you want to call it that. I'm sorry, but that's exactly what it says. Therefore, the Elohim will strike with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Elohim will uncover their secret parts. <laughs> He's going to do some judgment. And it's going to go right along with World War III, or whatever wild card's going to be played. The power outages. He says earlier the waters and the stores are going to be empty. That was... Uh, right here in, well, actually that was verse 1. Now he's going to tell you the result of what's going to happen because the supply chain is going to break down. Ezekiel 7 says the same thing. The seller should not return to that which is sold because the supply chain is gone, the power grid's down, instant famine. In that day, the Elohim will take away the finery the jingling anklets, the scarves, and the crescents. Verse 19, the pendants, the bracelets, and the veils, the headdresses, the leg ornaments, and the headbands, the perfume boxes, the charms, and the rings, the nose jewels, oh boy, the festal apparel and the mantles, the outer garments, the purses, and the mirrors, of course, the fine linen, the turbans, and the robes. Just like Revelation says about America, the Babylon, you have lived deliciously. He's talking about what people looks like. Oh, everyone seems to have it all together. You go to the store, and everyone's got their hair well done. They're used to going to the, the room and uh, put their clothes in the washer and dryer every day, get a shower every day. The water's going to be shut off. They're not going to have all this jewelry. Everyone's going to be nasty, filthy, dirty. With no power, there's no shower. There's no hot, cold running water. There's no natural gas to cook with. You're not going to have the perfumes. The supply chain's going to break down. Everything's going to break down. Everything's going to be lost. Now everybody's going to be ugly. They're going to be looking as ugly as they are on the inside. And so, verse 24, And so it shall be, instead of sweet smell, there will be a stench. Instead of a sash, a rope. Instead of well-set hair, baldness. Instead of a rich robe, a girdling of sackcloth. And branding, in, which means burning scars, says here, instead of beauty, your young men shall fall by the sword and your mighty in the war. He's talking about all this, but he's talking about war too. That's World War Three. Her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit on the ground. 
This is what's getting ready to happen, America the Babylon. Everyone's going to be nasty, filthy. <laughs> Get ready to join the club. There isn't going to be running water. There isn't going to be the power grid. Everything's going to be taken out. You're not going to be able to, to look good, feel good, and you ain't going to smell good. Your clothes will be rent. They won't be washed on a regular basis. Your underwear is going to be scarred and nasty. Yep. No more looking good and seeming to have it all together. It's all going to fall apart. All of it. This is getting ready to happen right here. So you can holler, this is Israel of old, all you want. This is going to happen. This is how he does things. America and this world has ignored this book long enough. This whole chapter is illustrating this world. I mean, at least Mother Russia doesn't, not that there are cupcakes over there. I haven't been over there, but at least they're not enforcing the, the transgender stuff. <clears throat> they're not encouraging the pride, the gay pride and all that. At least Mother Russia's got some good points. But America and what you call Israel over there, does it does the same thing. Tel Aviv's the gay pride capital of the Middle East. Everybody knows that. So when he says Judah and Jerusalem, well, what do you see going on over there? This judgment is getting ready to happen. And I think it goes right along with the Ezekiel chapter 7 in my previous videos. A singular disaster is coming. And there's going to be tidal waves along with mega earthquakes. That's what scripture says. I, I'm not prophesying. I'm just reading. I'm no prophet. Don't want to be one. I don't qualify to be one anyway. So there we go. I'm just reading what the scriptures say. But this is also getting ready to happen these are judgments people will not have it all together they're not going to have food on the table they're going to stink they're going to look bad no more pretty women everywhere nope and no more uh, enticing the men or vice versa no more sugar daddies and all this junk going on is no more sleeping with anybody and everybody it's all going to be judged. Everything's going to be stripped, taken away, and judged. Period. And we're going to know whose hand has caused this to come to pass. We're not going to be, say, be saying that the New World Order did it. No, the Father did it. <laughs> we're going to know who's responsible. Which is... Um, I'm going to cover that a little bit more in my next video about the rumors. Give you a little something to think about, and especially in relation to the assassination attempt of Donald Trump. And it'll, it'll make a lot of sense what I'm about to show. But this is getting ready to happen. It is. When he says, well said, hair's gone, it just baldness, yeah, people's knotted up hair not gonna look good smell good or feel good or feel like they're worth anything <laughs> by the time it's all over we're gonna know this chapter forwards and backwards by the time he's done with us and it's imminent and what just took games is just unheard of unbelievable it's like every Halftime at the Super Bowl always has to be something satanic. Open Satan worship right in everybody's face. This has gone far enough. It's going to be judged. All of it. All of it. It's coming. I don't know when. We might be sitting here for a couple more years. I don't know. It could happen tomorrow. In my opinion, everything's moving too slow. I mean, it, yeah, from a perspective, it's there's a lot happening, but it's still the, not major enough 
that it's getting people's attention. It takes a lot more fear to get people's attention, and that is what he's going to do. That's what he means by earlier in this chapter. His glory is going to be seen. He says it all over the Bible. When he says his glory be seen, that's another way of saying that we're going to know who did it. So I'll end that one here, giving you this warning. It's coming.